Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Uh, today we're installing the BAC 8000 on the Talaria. This is one of the best bikes out there. Super solidly well built, but let's be honest, it's a little bit underpowered. Well, today we're gonna change that by installing the BAC 8000 from Greenland Engineering. This is what you're gonna need, a couple things. Uh, hex set, you're gonna need the uh, Allen keys that came with your bike, a three inch, three inch extension. If you're installing the BAC 8000, you're going to need a uh, 10 millimeter wrench, a plier to take out the C-clips, and of course, the BAC 8000 from Gulane Engineering. It comes only with two phase wires because the one on the bike is already long enough. And of course, the BAC 8000, our kit actually comes with a custom made heatsink slash mount. This is the black anodized version. And then of course, you're also going to need the Greenline Engineering special harness. And with our kit, you actually enable additional features. You have an additional left hand regen to slow the bike down, but you also have throttle off regen and you can activate both of those independently uh, with the GLD dashboard app. So pretty cool features. We're gonna show you how to put that on onto this wonderful bike that is very beefy. Uh, closest thing to this is the Saran. It's a much lighter bike, the Saran, but this one's a little bit more beefy. I recommend if you're a taller rider, a heavier rider, this is the bike for you. And when you get the BAC 8000, it really changes the game on this bike. Let's get started. To give you an idea, this is the 12 pin and the 12 pin will go into the Talaria harness. It's matching harness. And this is the six pin. This is the one that carries the hall sensor information and that's gonna be a longer one. And that's gonna go into your motor hall sensor connector. Bring this down. There's a um, bag. And in that bag, the motor has a wire that comes out. It's the hall sensor connection. Now, this is the motor hall sensor connection. It goes to a uh, black bag. You're going to disconnect it from the bike harness, and then you're going to connect it to this connection. And again, if you're getting a hall sensor issue, it's usually because this is not connected fully, or this is not collected. The six pin is not connected fully onto the controller. All right, the first thing you're gonna do is remove the battery. I've already removed the battery out of the compartment. There's some cables here because this client actually has a light kit in here. So ignore this, this is not part of our kit. He just has some kind of light kit in there. But we've removed the battery. Now we're gonna remove the, the uh, battery cover. All right, there are these uh, C-clips here. We're going to remove them because we wanna take the battery cover out. It's just easier to work with if you take it out. Put them in a safe place. You may have to spin them a little bit. And then you can pull them out after you spin them. So that the opening of the C-clip is on the opposite side of where you're actually pulling from. And there you go. And these should slide out. You have a washer in there, so make sure that uh, you don't uh, lose your washer. There we go. I'm actually gonna grab that washer with my hair. And now the battery cover comes out. Two screws I've already removed one of them and the reason I want to remove these two screws is because these are very long and they have a sharp edge on the other side and I don't want those to puncture the wires you're gonna use a three millimeter hex and then you're gonna use an eight millimeter uh, eight millimeter uh, metric uh, wrench and we're just gonna remove these two so that the screw isn't digging into any wires 
on the other side of this battery wall. These I've already removed one. This is a three hex. And gently pry it loose. You don't want to strip it. And then we're going to take the uh, horn cover off as well on the bottom. I'll show you what that looks like. Go look through here. It has three screws, one up here, one here, and one on the side. So two on each side and then one up here. We're gonna start taking those out. Size, a three, X. You don't want to use an impact wrench. It could actually strip the screws. That's why you want to go slow first. I go slow first and gentle. Again, folks, this has this is this will not be on your Talar. This is wiring from the customer. He put lights in, so uh, don't be asking questions about why where's this wire coming from. This is does not come with the Talar. This is gentleman installed some custom lighting. So ignore this wiring. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just, let's this is the battery wall that we're gonna push back just so we can get some more room to work with. We're also going to remove the tilt sensor. We're going to use the, just going to remove the tilt sensor as well. We'll show you how to do that. Bring this down. This is the bash plate. Pull it really well. I'm going to loosen it. You don't have to remove it. Just going to loosen it a little bit so that it swivels down. This should be able to slide down like that. And then the controller should actually pop out like so. Okay, so now we're gonna take the Allen key and we're going to gently loosen these and uh, unbolt the controller. Okay, these are the cables from the uh, controller. We're gonna disconnect this here and here. They have a little clip that you just push and pull out. Like so, here's the other clip. And now the communication cables from the controller have been disconnected. Now we're going to use a five mil and gently pry these loose and um, disconnect these cables from the controller. And once they're all off, the controller should uh, fall or be completely removed from the bike. Be careful not to strip these. Like this. 
said, do not use an impact wrench. You will strip them. Now we're going to use a five mil and gently pry these loose and um, disconnect these cables from the controller. And once they're all off, the controller should uh, fall or be completely removed from the bike. Be careful not to strip these. Said, do not use an impact wrench. You will strip them. on eBay. All right, so the yellow phase wire is long enough. You don't need to extend this yellow phase wire, but we will extend the blue phase wire and we're going to extend the green phase wire. So simply remove the nut, the, the, uh, nut and bolt from the kit. And we're going to slip that onto the So, and then we're gonna tighten that with socket and an Allen key. We'll show you that in a few. First, let's get these on here. Don't lose your heat shrink wraps. We're gonna heat shrink that once we tighten it really well. You don't want any metal exposed at all. You don't want these phase wires to touch each other with exposed metal. So we're gonna heat shrink them once we tighten them. All right, I have a four mil and a 10 mil wrench. I'm gonna tighten these, I'm gonna straighten this out. I'm gonna tighten this as best as I can. I wanna make sure it's for this, you wanna make sure it's really tight. Okay, those are on pretty tight. Now we're going to put the first sleeve over, heat shrink it, and then we're going to, after we're done heat shrinking this, we'll put the second sleeve over.
right, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra tape just to be safe. Now it's time to put these wires onto the controller. All right, so you're gonna put your bolts here. You're gonna keep them close. Remember, when you're putting on these bolts, it is bolt, then locking washer, then washer. And that's why you don't have to over tighten this. Uh, it should just be hand tight. If you tighten it too hard, you will rip the sleeves inside of the controller. All right. All right, first we're gonna start with the yellow so that at least it can hold up the controller. And you're gonna put it just like that. And then I'm gonna use this socket here. That is a 10 mil. Remember, hand tight. You don't have to over tighten this. Right, folks you cannot get this wrong this is your ground wire negative okay and this is your positive you're gonna install this one last always last this goes last all right we're not gonna even use these screws but we're gonna install that one last the 16 pin harness and ground okay you're gonna plug this in first make sure it snaps Nice and, and solid. Then you're gonna grab the ground that I just showed you. Ground, can I get this wrong? And then you're going to put them together with the ground of the bike at the bottom. So at the bottom and this one, the circle on top. make sure I have my locking washer on here first yep locking washers on there my washer and my ground put my ground on my nut and then as you can see and then we're going to and tighten this. Okay. And this is what it should look like. As you can see. All right. And then now we can connect the positive to the plus. Okay, now I have my positive, red, with the plus of the controller. This is what it should look like. Blue phase wire, ground, both grounds here. Green phase wire, positive of the battery on the plus, and then yellow phase wire. See here. Okay, now we're going to pull this back. So we're gonna pull out the tilt sensor. It's right here. Get a little closer. 
the tilt sensor is this right here. We're gonna remove that by sliding it up. And there it is, close it out. And then we're going to disconnect it. All right, we're also gonna disconnect the display. We're not gonna need this anymore. So we're gonna remove that and disconnect it from here. It's also gonna create a lot of more room in here. Okay, that's been disconnected. Okay, so we've strapped the battery on top of the bike. We've plugged it in. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit so we can see the battery strapped onto the bike. And the reason we did that is before we close everything up, we wanna test it. Um, this needs to be removed. This does not, not compatible with, this is the display of the bike. That just needs to be removed and unplugged. So the bikes, uh, get ready for test it. We're going to power the bike on. Uh, ideally you want to put it on a stand, but we've been doing this forever. So we're gonna lean it against the stand. And we're gonna power it on. And we're gonna see the lights turn on on your bike. And you're gonna see on the bottom of the controller, you can see down there, there's a red light. It's hard, it's very difficult to, to see. It is on the other side. Let's see if we can get another angle. It is, let's see if you can see it. Um, it's underneath the green phase wire. All right, okay. So it's not blinking, everything's fine. And then we're going to slightly throttle. I have it, um, I'm gonna gently throttle. And as you can see, the wheel is spinning. All right, so that is a successful install. And then we're going to now show you how to put the bike back together. All right, we're gonna remove these two screws. I've already removed one of them. And the reason I wanna remove these two screws is because these are very long and they have a sharp edge on the other side. And I don't want those to puncture the wires. You're gonna use a three millimeter hex and then you're gonna use an eight millimeter, uh, eight millimeter uh, metric uh, wrench. And we're just gonna remove these two so that the screw isn't digging into any wires on the other side of this battery wall. I'm gonna clip these to make room and basically adjust the wires. It just, it's all jumbled up in there. So removing this, I can kind of like finagle the, uh, the wires a little bit better. All right, and then we're just going to adjust the wires. We're gonna bring this out. And these will go through this stanchion. And this will go like that. And start moving this in here, organizing it like that. And we'll put the cover in, but let's organize this mess that we have here. All right. This wire is already loose, just so you know. If you see a wire like that, it's not that it got disconnected. It's actually that it actually comes loose. Weird. All right, so this braided wire, where we pulled it up as much as we could. And then when we close this, I'm gonna put this to the side, like so, like that. So that it's not hitting these connectors. And make sure you pull it all the way to the top. This is the actual Tolaria harness. You're gonna pull it up and to the side and then pull it up so that 
it's not uh, hitting the, it'll make it easier for you to close the compartment and the uh, battery wall. All right, we're gonna start putting everything in. Again, let's make sure that these wires are ready to go. You do not wanna smash anything. good thing is that there's a big compartment in here you just have to get it all in there but don't smash any wires and then you'll be wondering why it's not working okay that looks like it's pretty snug now we're going to start closing this back up in the just three make sure it's aligned oh there we go then the other one will do I like to use this this way. It's easier than four. I'm gonna push this in. Make sure it's aligned. Or else it's not gonna grab the threaded washer on the other side. All right, so we're going, we've already put the battery in there. And the circuit breaker's off. We're gonna plug it in. And then we're gonna make sure we have some room for this elbow of the wire to go there. Let's take a look over here. Right, look to the right side back there. We're just gonna test it again. Make sure we didn't uh, disconnect anything. On, you know, turn the breaker back on. But then we're going to turn the bike on. Test. All right, so now we can put the bash card back up, put the horn cover back on, and uh, put the battery cover back on. It's a little tedious, but you gotta get a washer and a C clip in there. Grab it like this. I'm gonna push it forward into the grooves. That's one side.
This display is not an egg writer. It looks like an egg writer, but it is not. It has completely different firmware. It is not compatible. But if you want a display on your handlebars, you can use an egg writer, but most people prefer the GLE dashboard. It's easier to use. Also, you cannot use the GLE dashboard and the egg writer V2 together at the same time. It will corrupt the firmware as it's trying to communicate to the controller from two different protocols. So, all right, we're gonna get this off. I'm gonna cut this off. Now we're going to install the regen brake lever and we're going to plug it into this yellow right here. All right, so we're going to slide in the regen to the free and then you're going to make sure there's enough room so it doesn't hit the horn. If you want more room, you can actually slide everything over. Just slide this over, this over, and this over. Okay. And then we're going to connect. You gotta align that with the connection. You don't wanna bend the pins. So it's aligned with the divots. And then it should go in easy. app now it's time to marry it to the controller I'm gonna hit beacon search once you see e-bike turn your bike on you see e-bike hit stop search and then you hit e-bike and then you'll get the information populating okay and uh, so now can see that we have a uh, 92% battery charge. Um, let's see if all our peripherals are working. So we can see the ABS, we can see the live voltage here. If I hit the lever, it moves. All right, cool. I'm gonna hit a start throttle tune. I mean, the regen tune, I'm hitting the lever, as you can see, I'm gonna hit save. And then I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to do a throttle tune. Whatever you do, do not do a motor tune. This is already motor tuned. Do not do a motor tune. I'm going to repeat that. Do not do a motor tune. All right, so we're going to go to the throttle section. When this is red, you can safely hit the throttle. As you can see, the throttle is actually moving so that it is connected. So you're going to hit start throttle and then you can safely twist the throttle three times and hit save and it has been saved <clears throat> the controller already has uh stock power settings and the way we get to those is uh long press and it should be at 7000 watts and 3400 watts all right and if you need to change the battery voltage, you simply go to long press the battery, and then you scroll down, battery voltage, a 60 volt battery. It's already configured for that. It is a 16 cells in series. Let's say if this was a 20 S battery or a 72, you would hit 20 S and hit save. I'm not doing that right now because that's not what we have in here. All right. And in home, you have your, you can switch between ludicrous and street. Ludicrous representing 7,000 watts, street representing 3,400 watts. All right, so it's very important to see how RPMs, these bikes are so quiet. Sometimes you're going 7,000 RPMs and you don't even know it. 
because no other screen will give you that information. The Julie dashboard gives you that information. So once you get over like 7,000, it starts to turn red. I'll show you that. As you can see, we revved up to like 9,400. Obviously keeping the bike at those levels is not good for an extended period of time, but that's why you have your temperature sensor here. That's another thing you can set up your temperature gauges here. Here, this is pretty cool. You can reduce power when it gets to, um, let's say 95 degrees Celsius. And then you want it to turn off when the motor gets to 105 degrees Celsius, you hit save. And now basically if the motor gets to 90 degrees, 95 degrees Celsius, uh, it will uh, slow down or reduce the power. You can also change it to Fahrenheit. So to do that, you go to this screen section here and you can choose Fahrenheit. And if you want a buzzer, you can turn the buzzer on. It'll also buzz when it gets to the temperature or when you get a fault. And then here you can choose between kilometers and miles. So right here we have it set to miles. Okay, as you can see, change to Fahrenheit up here. All right, and then once you've done everything, uh, you can store your settings on the phone. And you go to the triangle icon and you go to settings history. And then you call this your base tune or whatever you want to call it, right? Base tune and hit save and it saves the, the information on your phone. That way, if you screw something up, you can always go back and load them. For example, you can just hit load and it'll say, are you sure you want to load these settings? You hit okay and it will load the settings. So once you get your bike up and running and your throttle tuned and your uh, region tuned, save your settings. Again, do not motor tune. This bike is already tuned. So, um, you know, uh, you don't have to do that. So, all right. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at support at jailengineering.co. Uh, this is, today is May 27th, I believe. Um, we're, we're having a chip shortage in 2022 and we're trying to get these kits out as much as fast as we can. But uh, there are some issues in China where they have a, a zero COVID policy. And some of the stuff that we source from China today, May 27th, 2022, has not arrived. The factories are closed. So um, bear with us while we get this kit out to you. Please be patient. We're trying to work as fast as we can, but we we like to deliver a quality, complete product. Have a nice day. Good. All right, so we've got the very first Greenland Engineering customer on our BAC 8000 Talaria, fully hull sensored, fully controllable. What do you think so far? Oh, it's got nice power. Woo! <laughs> Makes me tingle. <laughs> Give me power. I, I gotta be careful not to loop her. All right, all right. Let's get some. Uh, let's get some wheelie action. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead.